Hi everyone, a very good morning to all of you. I welcome you all to another session of RBI 247. I know you have been missing these sessions and I apologize for not taking these sessions last one week. But we're going to resume our sessions and we're going to cover everything that we missed in the last week of March. So today we're going to do March day 11 and 12 together. That is why today we have some very important news and also more news than usually. Right? So the first news that we're going to talk about today is interchange fee in UPI. Now this brings the question, will UPI be charged now? And what is this interchange fee? Right? Now UPI, if UPI is charged, it is a concern for a lot of people out there because almost 75% of the transactions, that is P2P transactions and P2M, peer to merchant and peer to peer transactions, digital transactions, 75% of them are through UPI mechanism today. Right now, if this is charged, what will be the impact? That concerns a lot of users of UPI. Now, the second one is about FPI onboarding norms. SEBI has relaxed some of the foreign portfolio investors onboarding norms. The third one is about new reforms that the SEBI is bringing. Now, final approval has been given by SEBI on certain reforms which are generally mostly related to investors or even market, right? So, investor protection ke liye, these reforms are brought out. The fourth one is about sovereign green bonds. What will be the amount of sovereign green bonds that will be issued in financial year 24, that is 2023 to 2024? And the fourth one, the last one is about PFRDA. It's not important. It's not actually something to study. But the upper age limit has been increased. So this can definitely be asked in your exams. So you are IFSC or SEBI or even RBI grade B. Okay, let's see the first news that is about interchange fee that will be charged in UPI. Now this is a concern. This calls for a concern for all the UPI users. That what is our UPI mechanism? Pe, if you are making any payment, Either peer-to-peer -peer payment or peer-to-merchant payment. Will it be charged? And if it will be charged, what will be this percentage charge? Right? So, now the thing is, and as per NPCI circular, UPI will be charged. But if you are paying UP, uh, through UPI from one bank account to another bank account or even to your wallet, then it will not be charged. However, if you are using PPI, that is Prepaid payment instruments, we already talked about them. So prepaid payment instruments are instruments wherein you make payment in advance and then keep debiting them, right? So for example, wallets, Paytm wallet or phone pay wallet or Amazon wallet. Now these are PPI instruments, prepaid payment instruments. These wallets that you have, in me, you have stored your money. Right? So, if you make payment through PPI wallet to any other PPI wallet using UPI, that will be charged. I repeat, if you make payment from your PPI wallet to any other PPI wallet using UPI, that will be charged. Right? So, as per the direction of NPCI, merchant transactions through PPI, through PPI to merchant transactions, ho rahi hai, those will be charged. And now RBI has made it mandatory for PPI instruments to be interoperable in the UPI ecosystem. What does it mean to, inter, to be interoperable? So what used to happen was a PPI wallet holder could earlier transfer funds directly to only that PPI wallet instrument. Right? So for example, if I have an account in Paytm, if I have Paytm wallet, I was unable to transfer it to a merchant who has a phone pay wallet. Right? I could pay using UPI to his or her bank account, but not to his wallet. Right? So now this has been made possible. Iska matlab ye interoperable ho gaya hai. So UPI se hum one wallet ko dusre wallet mein amount transfer kar sakte hai, which means it has become interoperable. And this is exactly charged. So from 1st April, the wallet holders will be able to use their balances to pay merchants with the UPI QR code. Now already ye hota tha, but now this will be done through any other digital wallet. Right? So if a, a Paytm user wants to transfer funds using UPI or using a UPI QR code to any other wallet user, any other wallet user 
दैट कुड बी डन इसी को हम इंटर ऑपरेबिलिटी बोल रहे हैं इंटर ऑपरेबिलिटी मीन वेन वन पेमेंट मैकेनिज्म कैन बी यूज टू मेक पेमेंट इन वेरियस अदर सेक्टर्स या वेरियस अदर यूजर्स को आप पेमेंट कर सकते हैं दैट इज इंटर ऑपरेबिलिटी सो दिस इंटर ऑपरेबिलिटी हैज बिन मेड मैंडेटरी बाई दी आर बी आई एंड अब इसी पे देर विल बी एन इंटरचेंज फी ऑफ अप टू वन पॉइंट वन परसेंट दैट टू only if the value is above rupees 2000 i hope itna samajh aa gaya hoga if the value is above 2000 and you are making a upi transaction from your ppi wallet to another ppi wallet or to another merchant's ppi wallet using upi code that will be charged although agar aap apne apne bank account se kar rahe hain so if you are transferring using your bank account aap apne bank account se dusre ke bank account mein dal rahe hain paisa directly using upi that will not be charged right that will not be charged only through ppi if you are doing it and that to wallet to wallet only that will be charged and the charges up to 1.1% above rupees 2000 so this was interchange fee now there is also a loading service charge so do cheezo ki baat ho rahi hai one is this interchange fee jo humne abhi samajh liya the other one is a loading service charge so any ppi wallet uh, wallet issuer ppi issuer that is the wallet so for example paytm they will have to pay the remitter bank which is the bank of the account holder they will have to pay a loading service charge so agar koi account holder is loading more than 2000 is loading more than 2000 in their wallet then the wallet will have to pay a 15 basis point charge loading service charge to the remitter account remitter bank remitter bank ko paisa dena padega that is this loading service charge paid by the wallet that is the ppi issuer if somebody is loading more than 2000 right so the prepaid payment instrument issuer that is the wallet will have to pay 15 basis point as wallet loading service charge to the remitter bank bank ko paisa dena padega for loading transactions which are more than rupees 2000 on the wallet now this like i said this intercharge fee will not be allowed using bank between bank account and the ppi wallet which means agar aap ppi wallet mein paisa dal rahe hain using bank account chahe p2p ho ya p2m ho कोई अगर ट्रांजैक्शन आप बैंक अकाउंट से वॉलेट में कर रहे हैं दैट विल नॉट बी चार्ज ओनली इफ यू आर मेकिंग अ ट्रांजैक्शन थ्रू योर वॉलेट अमाउंट राइट दैट विल बी चार्ज ओके ना हाउ विल दिस पेमेंट वर्क आपको इससे बहुत इजीली समझ आ जाएगा सो द यूजर्स ऑफ यूपीआई एप्स विल बी एबल टू सेंड मनी फ्रॉम द डिजिटल वॉलेट टू द मर्चेंट बैंक अकाउंट यूजिंग अ यूपीआई क्यू कोड राइट अर्लियर सच ट्रांसफर वर पॉसिबल but they were only possible through the same wallet account right through the same wallet now these will be allowed through different wallet between wallets of the same provider earlier that was possible but now for example i have also given an example if you had money in paytm wallet then earlier you could transfer it to another paytm wallet holder or paytm wallet but not to phone pay wallet but now that is possible that means that this has become interoperable and isi pe hi charge lagaya jayega That is 1.1 percent. So, ये interoperability का charge है, interchange fee one for up to 1.1 percent if the transaction is more than 2000 or even 2000. Okay, this will be paid by the payment operator to the NPCI. Also important, कौन किसको payment दे रहा है? By the payment operator to the NPCI. Okay. Now this was about the UPI interchange fee that will be charged on UPI if you are making payment from your PPI wallet, right? Bank accounts. If you are making payment using UPI, kar rahe hai, that will not be charged. Okay. Now the second news is about FPI norms, foreign portfolio onboarding norms. We all know that the government always targets ease of doing business. राइट right? अब उसमें एक पॉइंट भी आता है ईज ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट और अट्रैक्टिंग इन्वेस्टमेंट बिजनेस प्रमोशन तभी होगी जब इन्वेस्टमेंट आएगी इंडिया में एंड व्हाट इन्वेस्टमेंट आर वी टॉकिंग अबाउट हियर एफडीआई एंड एफपीआई ये बहुत बेसिक है इन दोनों का डिफरेंस आई होप यू नो स्टैटिक सेक्शन में हम पढ़ते हैं व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन फॉरन डायरेक्ट इन्वेस्टमेंट और फॉरन पोर्टफोलियो इन्वेस्टमेंट वॉट इज फॉरन पोर्टफोलियो इन्वेस्टमेंट वेन एन वेन अ फॉरन इन्वेस्टर इन्वेस्ट इन पोर्टफोलियो ऑफ सिक्योरिटीज फॉर एग्जाम्पल किसी भी स्टॉक्स में इन्वेस्ट कर दिया 
इंडियन स्टॉक्स में बॉन्ड्स में सिक्योर या अदर सिक्योरिटीज में एनी अदर फाइनेंशियल एसेट में अगर इन्वेस्टमेंट करी है एक पोर्टफोलियो बना के और अदरवाइज ऑल्सो देन दैट बिकम्स अ फॉरन पोर्टफोलियो इन्वेस्टमेंट फॉरन डायरेक्ट इन्वेस्टमेंट मीन आपने किसी कंपनी में डायरेक्टली इन्वेस्टमेंट करी है राइट सो फॉरन पोर्टफोलियो इन्वेस्टमेंट कंसिस्ट ऑफ सिक्योरिटीज एंड अदर फाइनेंशियल एसेट्स passively held by the foreign investor it does not provide the investor with direct ownership of the financial asset and it's relatively liquid kyunki ispe aap transfer kar sakte hain is financial asset ko so there is no direct ownership in on the company or in any financial asset right so ab sebi has eased norms of onboarding foreign portfolio investors what does it mean by that so agar kisi foreign portfolio investor ko if they want to invest in india they have to register obviously register karna padega kisi ko now who do they register to they register to ddps designated depository participants they register to designated depository participants ab is news mein hai kya koi bahut zyada bada nahi hua hai but the only change is now ki jab aap jab koi foreign portfolio investor hai when they register to the ddp they have to send their documents right unko apne documents dene padte hain compliance form fill karne padte hain wherein they tell about their uh, you know investment that they are going to make or the assets that they already hold or their name their address and all these compliance form mein all these points that they have to mention right so usme kuch documents dene padte hain now earlier the documents have to be given in both scanned form and physical form to ab change kya kara hai ye relaxation kya mili hai कि नाउ ऑनबोर्डिंग विल बी डन इवन इफ दे आर स्कैंड डॉक्यूमेंट्स तो अब स्कैन डॉक्यूमेंट्स देकर एफपीआई में ऑनबोर्डिंग हो सकती है एफपीआई की ऑनबोर्डिंग हो सकती है टू इन्वेस्ट इन इंडिया सो द सेबी हैज ईस्ट द ऑनबोर्डिंग प्रोसेस ऑफ फॉरन पोर्टफोलियो इन्वेस्टर्स थ्रू सेवरल प्रोसीजरल रिलैक्सेशन अराउंड डॉक्यूमेंटेशन एंड पैन वेरिफिकेशन एक्सेट्रा नाउ नाउ द सेबी हैज अलाउड DDPs that is the de designated depository participants to grant FPI registration on the basis of scanned copies of application forms and their documents so scanned copies ke through hi their onboarding process can be done which was earlier done through earlier they were required to send both scanned copies as well as physical documents right now it can be done through scanned copies only right and also digital signatures accept karne start kar diye so the sebi has allowed ddps to accept the use of digital signature by fpe fpi for the execution of registration ab ddps kya hote hain aur registration process kaise hota hai thoda hum wo dekh lete hain now usse pehle you will have to understand what are these depository participants i'm sure aap sab logo ne pehle padha hoga what are these depository participants they work as custodian of securities so for example agar aapko kisi security mein invest karna hai or you want to buy any securities you have to open a dmat account now this is open through a depository participant right for example nsdl or cdsl india mein right so this is done through a depository participant your dmat account is opened which facilitates your trading in stocks right so similarly kuch depository participants ko designate kar diya hai that they will be registering or they will be acting as a custodian of securities which is the basic function of a depository participant custodian of securities means safeguarding securities or holding securities right and also is in opening your dmat account a depository participant now a depository participant when designated they onboard fpis for registration and unko ek certification provide kar di jati hai that now you can invest in india now this is done on behalf of sebi by ddp right so the ddp grant registration to fpis on behalf of the regulator that is sebi and they also carry out other allied activities that are approved by the sebi for the ddps to perform okay so the sepi has allowed ddps to perform certain allied activities on behalf of sebi now each fpi that is foreign portfolio investor it engages the ddp before making investment so registration karni is very important before making any investment now this can be done by filling of various compliance forms and these are the certain uh, you know data that they have to mention in their forms along with the documents that they have to present jo ki pehle both स्कैन कॉपीज एंड फिजिकल कॉपीज देनी पड़ती थी नाउ दे ओनली हैव टू पे स्कैन कॉपीज ओके 
नाउ दिस वॉज द सेकेंड न्यूज दैट वी हैड कवर्ड सेबी ने कुछ नॉर्म्स में रिलैक्सेशन लेके आए हैं देर इज नथिंग मेजर रिलैक्सेशन दे हैव ब्रॉड बट ऑब्वियसली विद दिस ईज ऑफ डूइंग बिजनेस and ease of investment will be there zyada investment attract hongi india mein so it is a very good move done by sebi to registration jab easy ho jayegi there will be more investments that the indian companies will be able to attract from outside now the third one is about certain reforms that sebi is bringing to protect investors so the major function of these reforms is protecting investors sabse pehle sebi ne kya kara hai index providers ko uh, they have been brought under the framework of sebi right so they will be now regulated under sebi now what are these index providers these index providers are nothing but companies which provides you various indices right for example nifty 50 hai so top 50 companies nse provide karta hai top 50 companies ka aapko index provide kar diya jata hai further these 50 companies ki performance is mapped these 50 companies ki performance is mapped and as and when they increase Your investment in this index also increases, right? So, जो भी आपने investment करी है, अगर इनकी performance increase होगी, that means, for example, एक कुछ mutual funds भी होते हैं, जो index providers या indexes को इन indices को you know map करते हैं, and उसके basis पे you invest in those mutual funds, and basis on the performance of this entire index. अब index में क्या है? These fifty companies. So, in fifty companies की performance पे इन इंडेक्स की परफॉर्मेंस डिपेंड करेगी एंड फर्दर द म्यूचुअल फंड की परफॉर्मेंस विल डिपेंड ऑन द परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ दिस इंडेक्स प्रोवाइडर्स नाउ इंडेक्स प्रोवाइडर्स वर अर्लियर नॉट अंडर द एम्बिट ऑफ सेबी नाउ इट हैज बीन ब्रॉट अंडर द एम्बिट ऑफ सेबी सो ऑल इंडेक्स प्रोवाइडर्स इफ एनी कंपनी इज प्रोवाइडिंग एनी इंडेक्स इफ एनी कंपनी इज प्रोवाइडिंग एनी इंडेक्स दीस विल हैव टू बी रजिस्टर्ड विद सेबी ओके आई होप इट इज क्लियर सो ऐसी कंपनीज जो डिजाइन कर रही हैं किसी इंडेक्स को राइट या मैनेज कर रही हैं किसी इंडेक्स की परफॉर्मेंस दैट विल बी अंडर और कैलकुलेटिंग इट आल्सो दैट विल बी नाउ अंडर सेबी ओके नाउ ऑल अलोंग विद दैट ईएसजी डिस्क्लोजर में चेंजेस आए हैं दिस वी हैड ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड इन द मंथ ऑफ फेब्रुअरी इटसेल्फ नाउ दिस हैज बीन अप्रूव्ड बाय सेबी तो अब इसमें क्या था ईएसजी दैट इज एनवायरमेंटल सोशल एंड गवर्नेंस डिस्क्लोजर्स करने हैं सो कंपनी हु आर इन्वेस्टिंग और हु आर कलेक्टिंग इन्वेस्टमेंट्स From the public, general public से पैसा उठा रहे हैं and they are further investing into any sector that is working towards sustainable development, sustainable climate, environment, social sector, governance sector में if any company is investing and for that it is raising money from the investors or from the general public. Now disclosures have to be made by the company. अब इसमें हमने एक और चीज पढ़ी थी ERPs ये क्या है rating providers हैं so ESG rating बहुत ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंट है फॉर एनी कंपनी नाउ दीज डिस्कलोजर्स आर रिपोर्टेड अंडर द कोर B R S R that is business responsibility and sustainability reporting. It is nothing but a reporting mechanism. कैसे एक company report कर सकती है? So it is a core B R S R mechanism or reporting. तो एक document है, एक annexure बना हुआ है, जिस format में, जिस format में एक company report करेगी. What will they report? Their entire E S G disclosures, right? How is it investing or how is it raising funds? and how is it use utilizing those funds in these sectors okay ab iske liye 49 set of parameters have been chosen by sebi now initially ye top 150 companies ke liye hai pehle ye voluntary basis pe aayega fir baad mein phased manner mein it will be made mandatory and this will be applied to first 150 companies initially in this year going forward 1000 listed companies pe ye apply hoga Going forward, right? So, in a phased manner, me, ye one uh, one thousand companies pe apply hoga listed companies pe top one thousand listed companies based on the market capitalization or market size. Now, what will be mandatory to give disclosures under the ESR framework through this core BS BRSR, which me abhi tak sebi ne forty nine parameters leke aaye hain. Okay. 
Now the SEBI's board approved the far reaching. Now I mean, this is the heading. The SEBI board approved the far reaching changes in governance of mutual funds also and alternate investment funds. Now it as well like mechanism aya hai. Iske baare mein bhi hum baat kar chuke hai. As well like mechanism in the secondary market. Right? Jisme UPI ke through payment can be done and now it will be done in like an as well mechanism. What is an as well mechanism? Bhoot bari padaya hua hai. A application blocked, supported by block amount. Application supported by block amount. So what happens is this generally happens in an IPO, and it was also allowed using UPI. One can make payment, and their money will be blocked in an account, right? So what happens is, if a company is IPO issue, kar rahi hai, right? Initially, public offering kar rahi hai. Company apne shares ko list kar rahi hai stock exchange pe. So for example, a company lists its shares on a stock exchange initially. That is for the first time. Then it becomes an IPO, right? Now what happens in an IPO? There are investors who wants to invest in this IPO and wants to buy certain shares of this company. Now what they do is they pay amount. Let's say A paid ten thousand for let's say ten shares, and B paid two thousand for let's say two shares. C paid five thousand for five shares, right? So कुछ shares के लिए application amount दिया है. Now this amount, this amount paid will be blocked in an account will be blocked and jo bhi unko allotment hogi the allotment that will be done to these investors let's suppose a ne 10 shares ke liye apply kara tha now he got 7 to 7000 will be received by the company and rest 3000 will be transferred back so this happens so this is called as asba mechanism wherein the amount that you pay on application money right the amount that you pay on application money is blocked Is temporarily blocked, right? Is temporarily blocked. Now this will be done in the secondary market using UPI. So secondary market may if somebody wants to transfer their shares to somebody else, and this person pays an amount. Now this amount will be blocked. Earlier, क्या होता था? ये broker को देना पड़ता था. But now the clearing corporation, that is the middle person, the intermediary clearing corporation. Which is responsible for clearing the transactions, right? So various steps perform. करते हैं ये investor का क्या balance है? Or do they even have that invest that security which they want to sell? And if this investor has the money that he wants to buy the securities for, right? So ये clearing corporation का काम होता है to see that the transaction is done smoothly and it clears the transaction, right? So now this amount will be blocked. डायरेक्टली विद द क्लियरिंग कॉर्पोरेशन एंड जो इंटरमीडियर होते थे या जो ब्रोकर होते थे उनका रोल अब कम हो जाएगा राइट सो दैट विल बी डन इन एन एस बैकेजम इन द सेकेंडरी मार्केट ओके सो इन इन्वेस्टर्स कैन पास दिया मनी डायरेक्टली विद द क्लियरिंग कॉर्पोरेशन सर कमेंटिंग ब्रोकर एंड इवन अर्न इंटरेस्ट ऑन इट ओके नाउ अनादर कॉन्सेप्ट सेल्फ स्पॉन्सर्ड ए एम सी ऑलरेडी होते थे दीज ए एम सी एसेट मैनेजमेंट कंपनी दे वर ऑलरेडी Self sponsored. Now SEBI has allowed self sponsored AMCs to function and also has given that an entity must have a positive net worth and also net profit of 10 crore in the last five years. So last five years, me net worth positive होनी चाहिए and the net profit should be at least 10 crore to be a self sponsored AMC. एक बार समझ लेते हैं what is self sponsored AMC? Now asset management company. they are nothing but they are responsible for managing a mutual fund so mutual fund kya hota hai it is they pool investment from various investors and they you know invest this amount or you know put this amount in certain securities so for example agar ek debt mutual fund hai to so debt securities mein amount invest karegi of various investors so these investors are known as unit holders uh unit holders they invest their amount and this mutual fund they pool investment from various unit holders and further invest this in either any project agar reits ya invits hai or kisi securities mein various securities of various companies debt mein equity hai to equity mein invest karenge right so this is a mutual fund i hope you know what a mutual fund is now asset management companies are responsible for managing these mutual funds right ab asset management companies ke piche hote hain sponsors Right, a sponsor. What they do is they form a trust, a trust amount that is the initial amount 
एक ट्रस्ट फॉर्म करते हैं इनिशियल अमाउंट एंड उस ट्रस्ट को हैंडल करता है एक ट्रस्टी ये ट्रस्टी कौन अपॉइंट करता है एक स्पॉन्सर राइट सो अर्लियर जो स्पॉन्सर्स होते थे दे कुड बी बैंक और यू नो नॉन बैंक फाइनेंशियल लेंडिंग कंपनीज बट नाउ सेल्फ स्पॉन्सर्ड ए भी आ गए हैं जो कि ए खुद को सेल्फ स्पॉन्सर करेंगी बट दीज ए कैन नॉट बी ट्रस्टीज दीज एसेट मैनेजमेंट कंपनीज कैन नॉट बी ट्रस्टीज एज पर दी गाइडलाइन राइट गाइडलाइंस ऑफ सेबी एंड आल्सो एसोसिएशन ऑफ म्यूचुअल फंड्स ऑफ इंडिया इन दोनों की गाइडलाइंस के अकॉर्डिंग दीज एसेट मैनेजमेंट कंपनीज के नॉट बी द ट्रस्टीज हाउ एवर दे कैन बी द स्पॉन्सर्स दीज विल बी नोन एज सेल्फ स्पॉन्सर्ड ए एम सीज राइट बट एक एंटिटी का नेट प्रॉफिट होना चाहिए एटलीस्ट टेन करोर एंड पॉजिटिव नेटवर्थ होनी चाहिए इन लास्ट फाइव ईयर्स आई होप समझ आ गया होगा ओके नाउ ऑल्सो सेबी क्या कर रहा है सेबी हैज क्लियर द प्रपोजल फॉर यूनिट होल्डर प्रोटेक्शन कमिटी एक कमिटी बनाई जाएगी तो सेबी हैज प्रपोज एक प्रपोजल आया था सेबी के पास फॉर क्रिएटिंग यूनिट होल्डर प्रोटेक्शन कमिटी दिस विल बी वर्किंग टूवर्ड्स यूनिट होल्डर्स एंड देयर इंटरेस्ट ऑफ यूनिट होल्डर्स तो एक थर्ड आई की तरह दिस विल वर्क दिस कमिटी विल वर्क लाइक अ थर्ड आई विच विल बी लुकिंग एट द फंक्शनिंग ऑफ ए एम सीज फ्रॉम द पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ऑफ यूनिट होल्डर्स तो यूनिट होल्डर्स के इंटरेस्ट को सिक्योर करने के लिए राइट सो दे विल बी वर्किंग टूवर्ड्स द इंटरेस्ट ऑफ यूनिट होल्डर्स इंडिपेंडेंट रिव्यू मैकेनिज्म फॉर द डिसीजन दैट आर टेकन बाय द एम सीज फ्रॉम द परस्पेक्टिव ऑफ यूनिट होल्डर्स इंटरेस्ट अक्रॉस ऑल प्रोडक्ट एंड सर्विसेज दीज आर द फंक्शन ऑफ अ स्पॉन्सर अ स्पॉन्सर इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर फॉर्मिंग अ ट्रस्ट for forming a trust and also appointing the board of trustees what are these trustees responsible for they regulate the mutual fund while ad adhering to the sebi and amfi guidelines what is amc that is asset management companies they are responsible for selecting ki kaun si security mein invest karna hai kitna paisa invest karna hai that is done by an asset management companies aur inke andar hota hai aum that is asset under management matlab kitna pool of fund ye collect kar chuke hain जिनको ये इन्वेस्ट करने वाले हैं राइट दैट इज एसेट अंडर मैनेजमेंट एंड द वैल्यू ऑफ दिस एसेट अंडर मैनेजमेंट कीप्स चेंजिंग एज पर द फॉर्मूला दैट इज देयर राइट सो ए एम सी दे टेक्स अ कॉल ऑन विच सिक्योरिटीज दैट दे हैव टू बाय और सेल और होल्ड और उसको मैनेज कैसे करना है दैट इज एसेट मैनेजमेंट कंपनी नाउ अ कस्टोडियन अ कस्टोडियन इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर सेफ गार्डिंग योर यूनिट राइट सो सेफ गार्डिंग ऑफ द म्यूचुअल फंड यूनिट जो भी यूनिट्स बनाए हैं a custodian is there for safeguarding of the units jaise ek depository participant tha for uh, being a custodian of your security similarly a custodian of mutual fund or mutual fund units is also there right i hope aap log nahi thake hain this session is going to go abhi bahut zyada lamba theek hai now pe's that is private equity firms private equity funds can now set up mutual fund ye ek aur uh, I think third or fourth reform by SEBI. Private equity firms or funds can now set up mutual funds. What are these private equity firms or private equity funds? So they are basically companies or funds which invest in equity of companies. They invest in equity of startups. So if any startup ko agar apne equity bech ke paisa uthana hai, they can be done through private equity fund. Now they this can be done through venture capitalist funds or credit growth funds or um, equity growth funds. ऐसे बहुत सारे अवेलेबल मैकेनिज्म्स हैं फॉर दिस प्राइवेट इक्विटी फंड्स और प्राइवेट इक्विटी फर्म्स और प्राइवेट इक्विटी कंपनीज जो कि बेसिकली क्या करते हैं कोई स्टार्टअप है या किसी कंपनी है कोई कंपनी है दे विल इन्वेस्ट इन देयर इक्विटी एंड होल्ड सर्टेन परसेंटेज ऑफ देयर इक्विटी सो फॉर एग्जांपल 10% स्टेक इक्विटी स्टेक खरीदने के लिए 10% इक्विटी स्टेक खरीदने के लिए दे पे लेट्स से 10 लाख सो दिस इज द फंक्शन ऑफ अ प्राइवेट इक्विटी firm or a private equity fund now these private equity fund can also set up mutual funds which was earlier not possible so now they can set up mutual funds independently or in collaboration with other firms as well right so this has been done because pehle jo sponsors the ya jo trustees the they were facing certain cash crisis and jo usually pe funds hote hain ya pe firms hote hain they use investments from hni or they are basically hnis also you know the, the firm is created by an hni high net worth individual high net worth individual so high net worth individual they have a lot of money and they can create now their own mutual fund now an entity with 40% stake or more in an asset manager is a sponsor ye sponsor ki definition hai so now pe funds can be sponsor 
of mutual funds themselves right currently only banks non bank lenders uh, or those with more than 5 years of experience in managing a pool of fund were allowed to be mutual fund sponsors but now pe firms or pe investors can also form their mutual funds now the last reform that we're going to talk about today that sebi has brought out is creating a 33000 crore ka backstop facility fund ya ek debt mutual for debt mutual funds so what happens is this will work like a backup fund or an emergency fund to ek 33000 crore ka fund banaya ja raha hai this will be a backup fund or an emergency fund so in case a debt mutual fund is facing crisis debt mutual fund kya hote hain any mutual fund that is investing in debt डेट सिक्योरिटीज में बॉन्ड्स में इन्वेस्ट कर रहे हैं राइट एंड इफ लेट सपोज फेल्स सो फॉर एग्जांपल एसबीबी बैंक सिलिकॉन वैली बैंक दे फेल्ड और क्रेडिट स्विस दे फेल्ड राइट सो व्हाट विल हैपन जिन लोगों ने भी इनके बॉन्ड्स में इन्वेस्ट करा होगा या तो उनके बॉन्ड्स राइट ऑफ हो गए राइट फॉर एग्जाम्पल ए टी वन बॉन्ड्स और दे विल नॉट बी पेड सो डेट पेमेंट नहीं होगी राइट सो इन दैट सिचुएशन इन अ क्राइसिस सिचुएशन to you know withhold the contagion effect that is the ripple effect that might take place so withhold to withhold the contagion effect or the ripple effect that might take place in case companies or a group of companies fail leading to a fail in the debt mutual fund a backstop facility or an emergency fund has been created by the sebi now is emergency fund ka naam hai cdmds corporate debt market development fund now this is designed to help the mutual funds tide over in instances of liquidity crisis like i explained to control the contagion effect or the ripple effect that can happen in the debt market in case a major credit event or a market dislocation takes place right the fund will be set up in the form of alternate investment fund these are nothing but works like pooled investments aif kya hote hain aif jo hai invest karte hain aif jo hai invest karte hain investment fund hai they are nothing but pooled investment only so category wise teen investment fund hai aif1 aif2 already gulabsa ma'am aapko bahut baar padha chuki hai right so this will be set up like an aif and will enjoy the guarantee of national credit guarantee trust company of the government of india right sbi mutual fund jo ki country ka largest asset manager hai this will be the main stakeholder of the proposed aif that is the credit fund so credit debt market डेवलपमेंट फंड कॉर्पोरेट डेट मार्केट डेवलपमेंट फंड थर्टी थ्री थाउजेंड करोड़ का फंड है इसमें पहले थ्री थाउजेंड नाउ हु विल बी कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग इन दिस फंड इस फंड में कहीं से पैसा तो जा रहा होगा सो दिस विल बी कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड बाई एसेंट मैनेजमेंट कंपनी ओनली दे विल बी कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग इन दिस फंड राइट सो वट हैपन इन डी आई सी जी सी ऑल्सो इफ यू नो डी आई सी जी सी में पांच लाख तक का पैसा आपका इन अ बैंक अकाउंट इज सेफ इज सिक्योर्ड राइट एंड Uh, to have an insurance on this money banks have to pay certain percentage of deposits to DICGC so similarly amcs ko bhi wohi concept aap dimag mein leke chaliye and you will be able to understand now amcs will have to pay certain percentage to this fund this fund corporate debt manage uh, corporate debt market development fund corporate debt market development fund mein AMTs will have to pay certain percentage of certain money of their debt asset of their debt schemes, right? They will have to pay a percentage of their debt asset of their debt uh, schemes that they are holding, right? In the fund, and initially, three thousand crore will be paid by the AMTs, and further market se paisa uthayenge more than this three thousand crore, right? Contributions kahan se aengi? So initial contribution will be three thousand crore, which will be contributed by the AMTs. and the rest will be borrowed from the market right the contribution the amc's contribution to the corpus will be proportional will be in proportion to the debt assets jitne bhi wo unke paas assets under management hai which they are you know investing in various debt schemes ya bonds mein ya kahin se bhi jo paisa utha rahe hai wo now a percentage or proportionate basis pe they will invest amount in this fund right the bigger the size of the debt scheme the higher will be the contribution kyunki proportional basis pe to agar zyada debt assets aap utha rahe hain aur the more the number of assets or the amount of assets that you have the more contribution you will have to make in the fund initially 3000 crore will be made by the amcs and further 
मार्केट से पैसा उठाया जाएगा थ्रू मार्केट बोरोइंग सो कंट्रीज लार्जेस्ट एसेट मैनेजर दैट इज द एस बी आई म्यूचुअल फंड विल बी द मेन स्टेक होल्डर फॉर दिस फंड ओके आई होप ये समझ आ गया होगा वेरियस रिफॉर्म डाटा आर टेकन बाय से भी क्या क्या लेके आए हैं एक बार रिकैप्चुलेट कर देते हैं सो अ बैकस्टॉप फैसिलिटी और एन इमरजेंसी फैसिलिटी फॉर डेट म्यूचुअल फंड जिसका नाम है कॉर्पोरेट डेट मार्केट डेवलपमेंट फंड नाउ टी फंड्स प्राइवेट इक्विटी फर्म्स दे विल नाउ बी एबल टू बी स्पॉन्सर्स ऑफ म्यूचुअल फंड विच वॉज अर्लियर नॉट पॉसिबल Similarly, self-sponsored AMC is को promote कर रही है. तभी earlier this was already possible. Self-sponsored AMCs हो सकते थे. Now, if any AMCs uh, want, you know wants to disinvest from their mutual funds, that is also possible initially, right? Now, uh, entity का positive net worth होना चाहिए, net profit होना चाहिए more than ten crore. And the SEBI has proposed कि unit holder protection committee भी बनाई जाएगी, right? SEBI ने proposal को clear कर दिया है. फर्दर एस्पा लाइक फैसिलिटी इन द सेकेंडरी मार्केट जो कि पहले प्राइमरी मार्केट में थी आईपीओ में होता था अब सेकेंडरी मार्केट में भी होगा इंडेक्स प्रोवाइडर्स विल बी ब्रॉट आउट अंडर द फ्रेमवर्क ऑफ सेबी एंड ई एस टी डिस्कलोजर्स इनिशियली फर्स्ट वन फिफ्टी लिस्टेड कंपनीज एंड फर्दर वन थाउजेंड लिस्टेड कंपनीज गोइंग फॉरवर्ड विल बी डिस्कलोजिंग थ्रू बी आर एस आर फोर बी आर एस आर के थ्रू रिपोर्टिंग करेंगी ऑफ देर ई एस जी Okay, now we're done this. Done with this. Also, the next news is about sovereign green bonds. Now, in this year, the government decided in fiscal year 2023 may fiscal year 2023 may the target of government was 16,000 crore, and January may 8,000 crore RBI issued sovereign green bonds on behalf of the government. Right? That was the first time RBI issued 8,000 crore ka sovereign green bond. हमने पिछली ही क्लास में sovereign green bonds detail में discuss करा था. Under this, what happens is, like the T-bills होते हैं, wherein the government takes money from the public, right? So similarly, green bonds में जो investment government लेगी, so these are bonds that are taken up by the government. Your government is issuing these bonds and collecting investment through these bonds, and this money will be further invested in green projects, right? Sustainable projects, working towards sustainable development, right? Or working towards climate change. Okay, so up. फाइनेंशियल ईयर ट्वेंटी फोर दैट इज जो बजट आया है उसके बाद बजट के डॉक्यूमेंट में एक्सपेंडिचर प्रोफाइल डॉक्यूमेंट ऑफ द बजट इसमें डिसाइड हुआ है ट्वेंटी थ्री थाउजेंड सेवन सिक्सटी फोर करोड़ का पैसा विल बी इशूड बाय द गवर्नमेंट थ्रू सॉवरिन ग्रीन बॉन्ड्स राइट सो अंडर दिस द बजट के डॉक्यूमेंट में है दैट द सेंटर विल रेज ट्वेंटी थ्री थाउजेंड ओके इन द कमिंग फाइनेंशियल ईयर दैट इज फाइनेंशियल ईयर 24 नाउ पिछले साल 16000 करोड़ था वर्थ ऑफ मेड इन ग्रीन बॉन्ड्स इशूड बाय द गवर्नमेंट इन फाइनेंशियल ईयर 2023 नाउ अब ये पैसा जो गवर्नमेंट ले रही है थ्रू सोवरेन ग्रीन बॉन्ड्स वेयर विल दिस बी इन्वेस्टेड नाउ दिस इज सपोज्ड टू बी इन्वेस्टेड इन ग्रीन प्रोजेक्ट्स राइट सो गवर्नमेंट ने ओके ये हम बाद में पढ़ेंगे व्हाट आर द नाइन कैटेगरीज दैट द गवर्नमेंट हैज ब्रॉट आउट सबसे पहले देख लेते हैं सो एज पर द बजट The, this amount will be given to Ministry of Railway. सबसे पहले most सबसे बड़ा amount most of these green bond proceeds will be given to Ministry of Railways up to twelve thousand four seventy nine crore. So this amount is important. This amount is important. पिछले साल का sixteen thousand crore. This is also important, right? So Ministry of Railways को जाएगा जो कि electric locomotives that is already under the construction new Kolkata Metro lines. उसमें इन्वेस्टमेंट होगी आफ्टर दैट न्यू एंड रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी मिनिस्ट्री में जाएगा सेवन थाउजेंड करोड अंडर इट्स वेरियस स्कीम्स देन मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ हाउसिंग एंड अर्बन अफेयर्स विल गेट ट्वेंटी सिक्स जीरो नाइन करोड ये आप ईच एंड एवरी अमाउंट यू कैन नॉट रिमेंबर इफ यू कैन दैट्स वेरी गुड बट एटलीस्ट मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ रेलवे को जितना अमाउंट जा रहा है यू विल हैव टू रिमेंबर दैट एंड यूल ऑल्सो हैव टू रिमेंबर द अमाउंट द इंटायर अमाउंट ऑफ बोरविंग थ्रू सॉवरिन ग्रीन बॉन्ड्स ओके और इक्विटी इन्वेस्टमेंट्स इन वेरियस मेट्रो प्रोजेक्ट्स अंडर मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ हाउसिंग एंड अर्बन अफेयर्स राइट एंड द एनवायरनमेंट मिनिस्ट्री विल गेट 169 करोड़ नाउ एक ग्रीन बॉन्ड फ्रेमवर्क आया था ग्रीन बॉन्ड फ्रेमवर्क व्हिच वाज यू नो देयर गिवन बाय द सेंटर इन नवंबर 2022 ग्रीन बॉन्ड फ्रेमवर्क जिसने बताया था कैसे ग्रीन बॉन्ड्स इशू होंगे कितने अमाउंट के होंगे राइट right? जिसके अंदर इनिशियली 8000 करोड़ आरबीआई ने इशू करे थे ओ सॉरी 
uh, yeah, are issued on behalf of the government to the general public. These sovereign green bonds, right? Now, nine categories we have government ne. Under these nine categories are given by the government. What are these nine categories? Renewable energy, energy efficiency, clean transportation, climate change adaptation, sustainable water, waste management, pollution prevention and control, green buildings, sustainable management of living natural resources and land use and terrestrial and aquatic biodiversity conservation. So these are the nine categories where the proceeds will be invested by the government. Okay, so let's see a little bit about the sovereign green bonds. Uh, who issues them and are they eligible for SLR or repo transactions? These are the certain things that you should know phase one may definitely a question asakta hai or even in phase two. So uh, what we can expect in phase two is that a paragraph might be given. You'll have to identify ki sovereign green bonds hai. Then amount can be asked in phase two, right? Usi paragraph ke basis pe and certain features of sovereign green bonds can be asked in phase 2. But pehel paragraph diya hota hai generally and questions on the basis of that paragraph are given. So the issuance, they are issued through uniform price auction. Uniform price auction means ek hi price pe they are auctioned, right? Ab auction kyo ho rahe hai? That is, kitne kisko auction kar rahe hai? Or who, which investor will get what amount of, you know, uh, these bonds, right? So kitna bonds wo uh, issue, uh, invest kar rahe hai, right what is the amount that is invested by any investor uh, for these bonds okay uniform price pe hoga, that is the price will be uniform right now non-competitive bidding hogi 5% non-competitive bidding hogi and 5% is reserved for retail investors 5% of the entire sale amount let's suppose government says ki 1000 crore ka karna hai so 50 crore will be there for reserved for retail investors right now, these are eligible for repo transactions, which means if uh, banks are repo operations, kar rahe hai, they can use these sovereign green bonds for repo transactions. Right? Similarly, SLR purpose, ke liye, they can maintain these, repo, uh, these sovereign green bonds. So, they are eligible for repo transactions, collateral ko use karke, repo transactions kar sakte hai, using these sovereign green bonds. Similarly, SLR purpose, ke liye, this is also eligible. Now, they are done by primary dealers. The underwriting is done by primary dealers. I hope you know what are primary dealers. Last class, we have discussed what are primary dealers. They, uh, you know, buy and invest in securities directly from the RBI. They are also known as market maker or the decider of the interest rate of securities. Now, uh, when issued trading. So, like regular government securities, they will also be eligible on when issued trading. When issued means this segment of transaction which enables the market players to place bids at certain price level before the actual auction of bond is carried out. So, when the issue will be revealed, then all the things will be revealed. Okay? To place bids at certain price level before the actual auction of the bond is carried out. Okay, now eligible for trading in the secondary market. Secondary market may the investors can trade in these or buying and selling of these sovereign green bonds can take place. Okay, now the last news of today is about Pension Fund Regulatory Development Authority, PFRDA. This is, there is nothing very important in this, but also, so ye ek point hai, that is the upper age limit has been increased. This can be asked in your exam. Or kuch isme bohat bada nahi hua hai, the change has been that the upper age limit of the ombudsman of the ombudsman is increased from 65, 65 years, not 60 years, 65 years. I'll make the change in the PDF from 65 years to now 70 years. Okay, so from 65 years, it is now changed to 70 years. Paatsal increase kari gai hai. What is PFRDA? It is a regulatory body for the overall supervision of the pensions in India. So we all know about NPS, the National Pension System. That is the scheme that is operated just me pension amount contribute karte hai and at the end of that, uh, you know, the amount at your retirement or at the end of the, the period for which you have invested or you're giving the contribution. After that, you will be able to receive pension, regular pension aapko mil jayegi. That is the central government NPS scheme, right? So this is regulated by PFRDA, works under the Ministry of Finance, Government of India. Okay, so according to the PFRDA regulations, a ombudsman was made. 2020 was circular tha for, by the PFRDA for ombudsman. 
फॉर एन ऑम्बुडमेन सो वॉट विल दिस ऑम्बुडमेन डू तो जो ग्रीवियांस होती है दे आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर रिजोल्विंग द कंप्लेन और ग्रीवियांस राइट सो अगर किसी ने इफ एनी बडी हैज यू नो रेज द ग्रीवियांस और कंसर्न टूवर्ड्स एन पी एस या तो नेशनल पेमेंट सिस्टम के अगेंस्ट ही आपने कोई कंप्लेन करनी है और यू हैव मेड अ कंप्लेन टू द नेशनल पेमेंट सिस्टम ट्रस्ट द नेशनल पेमेंट सिस्टम ट्रस्ट एंड विद इन थर्टी डेज इट इज नॉट रिजोल्व यू कैन फर्दर गिव दिस कंप्लेन टू द ऑम्बुडमेन ओके सो अ कंप्लेन एंड हुज ग्रीवियांस हैज नॉट बीन रिजोल्व विद इन थर्टी डेज फ्रॉम द एस्केलेशन ऑफ द ग्रीवियांस टू दी एनपीएस ट्रस्ट या फिर अगर एनपीएस ट्रस्ट के अगेंस्ट ही कोई कंप्लेन है and the same remains unresolved within 30 days they can file an appeal to the ombudsman ombudsman is nothing but they work towards grievance redressal right a person who is appointed as the ombudsman holds office for a period of 3 years and would be eligible for reappointment for further 2 years so ye aap yaad rakhiyega kuch chote chote points hai phase 1 mein it can be asked in your pa pa da exam or ifsc exam or even in rbi exam right the appeal must be done in writing jo ki appeal hai that is the complaint it should be done in writing signed honi chahiye it should be signed by the complainant or their authorized representative in case the uh, you know the complainant is not authorized to sign or if they have an authorized representative now the ombudsman has the right to you know dismiss the complaint agar unko lagta hai it is a frivolous complaint or it does not have any basis the complaint does not have any basis they can dismiss the complaint they have the right to do that now ab ye complaints hoti kaisi hain generally the kinds of complaints that is received is like you know a uh, delay in receiving the pension or delay in remitting the pension even if the uh, amount is deducted from their salary right so even though they have been deducted from their salary contributions jo hai nps account mein reflect nahi ho rahe hain deduction ho gayi hai but nps account mein reflect nahi ho rahe hain ya fir pension hi received nahi hui hai delay in remitting of pension contributions to the nps account so these are the certain kinds of complaints that the grievance redressal gets right now the grievance must be first filed kahan pe file karni hoti hai ye grievance this has to be filed on the central centralized grievance mechanism system cgms centralized grievance mechanism system if they are unresolved then the grievance can be escalated to the ombudsman राइट right? हमने थोड़ा सा ऑम्बुडमेन के बारे में पढ़ लिया वेव आल्सो रेड अबाउट पीएफआरडीए व्हाट इज द फंक्शन एंड आल्सो नाउ व्हाट इज द रिवाइज्ड एज लिमिट अपर एज लिमिट ऑफ द ऑम्बुडमेन लेट्स कम टू द क्वेश्चंस नाउ ऑन व्हिच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग हैज एनपीसीआई डिसाइडेड टू लीव आई इंटरचेंज फी ऑन नाउ ये ऑप्शंस थोड़े से कंफ्यूजिंग हो गए हो सकते हैं बैंक टू बैंक ट्रांसफर थ्रू यूपीआई नो पी2पी थ्रू यूपीआई नो पी2पी यूजिंग पीपीआई मैकेनिज्म any ft through upi no rtgs through upi no merchant transaction through ppi on upi platform yes agar aap ppi wallet ke through payment kar rahe hain this seems like the correct option here through ppi wallets if you are making any payment using upi platform then they will be charged which of the following is responsible for onboarding fpi registration through documentation sebi rbi fema no ddp that is designated depository participants a dash of amc is responsible for forming the trust and appointing of the trustees the correct answer here is a sponsor as per the expenditure profile documents of 2023 union budget the center is expected to issue what amount of sovereign green bonds please tell me in the comment section aaj hi humne padha hai this is very important can definitely be asked in phase 1 exam as per the expenditure profile document of the fy 2023 kaun si ministry ko sabse zyada paisa jayega which ministry is is going to get the most amount of money the largest amount of money raised through these bonds this is ministry of railways do not get confused what is the upper age limit of the ombudsman under the pfrda the correct answer here is 70 years recently rbi issued an indicative calendar for the first ever sale of sovereign green bonds now this was in fy 23 फर्स्ट कैलेंडर निकाला था आरबीआई ने जनवरी से पहले दिस जनवरी 2023 से पहले विद रिगार्ड्स टू दिस कंसीडर एंड आइडेंटिफाई द करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट अबाउट सोवरेन ग्रीन बॉन्ड्स सो मेड इन सोवरेन ग्रीन बॉन्ड्स 16000 करोड़ का होना था इफ इन एफआई 2023 दिस इज करेक्ट 
Investment under the sovereign green bond would not be eligible for SLR purpose. This is incorrect. Unlike GSEC, the sovereign green bonds can be traded in the secondary market. Can be traded in the secondary market? Yes. Yes, this is also a correct statement. So, you have to incorrect statement. Batani hai. Do not forget, you have to identify the incorrect statement. However, you have to identify the incorrect statement here. Now, however, unlike GSEX, the sovereign green bonds can be traded in the secondary market. I think GSEX are also traded in the secondary market. That is why this statement is also incorrect. Now, PFRDA is the regulatory body for overall supervision and regulation of pension funds in India. The PFRDA functions under which ministry in India? The correct answer here is Ministry of Finance. Okay, these are the answers given here. Yes, so this statement is correct. This is correct and you have to find out the incorrect statement. I'll confirm the answer of this question, question number 7. Okay, I'll confirm and write down in the comment section and in the revised PDF. Okay. So finally, we have come to the end of the session. I hope you like the session. I, I know it was a little bit long, but we have missed classes previously. But uh, whatever uh, cover will be covered will last week se related hoga in this session and also in the next session, right? So in the next session, we're going to study everything that is, that is you know, brought out by RBI. So in the next session, mein we're going to talk everything that has come out by the RBI. RBI ke jo bhi norms hai, guidelines are coming RBI, pe, that we'll be covering in the next session. Okay, thank you.